Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a prototype copy of Lands of Galzir. It's an adventure storytelling exploring game by Snowdale Design. Lands of Galzir is set in Daemiria, the same world as both Dale of Merchants and Dawn of Peacemakers. This game is all about adventuring and exploring the world as you will have many choices and be able to do whatever you want to do. The cool thing is your decisions in the game will have consequences and change how the game plays in later rounds, or later games. To be clear, this game is heavy on the storytelling, and the aim of the game is to have an open world to explore and do whatever you want, searching at each nook and cranny instead of following a predetermined path. Players will control one of four main characters. Each character will have a player board that tracks their gold with this dial here, and these skill markers will mark how well you can perform certain tasks. The pink represents thievery, the orange, might, yellow, survival, green, knowledge, blue, communication, and purple, perception. These are important because as players perform skill tests when trying to do certain things when uh, the opportunity presents itself, players that have an advanced skill of a certain type will be able to have a better result. Players will always be able to roll five dice on each challenge. This would be five normal black dice if not exchanging dice out for any of the advanced dice. But if you want to roll more results of a certain skill which your character has, you will want to replace any number of those black base skill dice with any number of advanced skill dice that you have skill markers for. Each advanced die have two faces that has two icons matching that skill color. For example, the orange die has these two faces that have two might symbols, and the other four faces of that die has two faces for each of the neighboring skills. For example, there are two faces with this one icon of thievery, and then the last two faces with one icon of survival. So really, not only does the matching advanced die help pass skill tests for that matching skill, but also it gives you an increased chance of gaining successes of both neighboring skills. So if I were to try a skill test for knowledge and my player board looks like this, I would take two base skill dice. These have one symbol of each type on each of its faces. Then I want one green advanced die to hopefully roll the double books, and then two blue dice in hopes to roll books since there are two faces with the book icon instead of the one that are on the base dice. And then to actually do the skill check, you will roll all those five dice. If you don't like what you rolled, you can re-roll all five dice again one more time. But be careful because your results might be worse on that second roll and there is no going back. You will then count up how many successes by counting the number of icons that you've rolled matching the skill that you were rolling for. In addition, you might have some cards that will give you additional successes depending on what you rolled. And in any great storytelling game, the result is followed up with the explanation of what happened to either continue the storyline to maybe end it or to give you additional choices as to where it goes. Now let's get back to that player board. You have three spots for items that you will collect as you adventure around and other cards such as companion cards and adventure status cards will be placed to the side of your board. Companions can give you additional tags or abilities and status cards will do the same but wear off with time. These status cards can be something good or bad. You can read the card and see how it might affect you, and many times the digital storybook might also ask you if you have a certain tag, or maybe a, a card limits you or lets you do something that you usually can't do. The clock on the bottom tells you how long it takes for that card to wear off. You will find two matching timer tokens. It doesn't matter the icons that are listed. One will go on the card, and the other will go on the calendar on the board. When the day token makes it to that token, then you will trigger what it says in the box on that card. It might be discarding that card or maybe gaining a different one. You'll never know because there's so many cards. Besides all those type of cards, there are also local status cards that are placed near the board by a certain location. Global status cards affect all adventurers and will be placed near the board so all players know what's going on and how it affects the game. 
So now let's zoom back out again and talk about the game in more broad sense. The game can be played competitively or cooperatively. The two games are almost the same. They're played the same way, but the way that you play them might change depending on the mode that you choose. The strategy changes. When playing competitively, the player who gains a stated amount of prestige first, which is different for each player count, will win the game. When playing cooperatively or solo, it will end after a certain number of rounds, again, depending on the player count. The game can then be saved with players keeping their gold, their items, their cards, and quests to continue the next game. A game represents a month, and players will play through a year, and while playing, as the seasons change, the board will get flipped over from one side representing more of a summer to the other side that represents more of a winter. Both sides have the same cities, but the cards shown on those cities will change, which also can change what scenes that you take while playing the game. Not only will you be exploring these scenes, but one of the main things to do in the game is to fulfill quests, which requires that your character is in a certain city or a certain place on the board to trigger that quest, and all players will most likely start with at least one quest. But in addition, to gain more side quests, you can visit different places on the board to gain more to do more. Each character can have up to three quests going at one time. Anyways, you're probably wondering how the game is actually played, so let's talk about that. On a player's turn, they will be able to move their character up to two spaces in which they can stop and pick up a new quest and keep on moving. Then, after moving, the character can resolve a scene from the Book of Adventurers. To clarify a little bit and help you, because it was a little bit hard for me at first, during the game, if it's talking about a number that shows three digits, it's talking about a card. All cards are numbered and placed in numerical order, and you can find them faster that way. Scene numbers have four digits total, and they refer to going into the web-based application and to read that number. Anyways, after you're done moving, you can choose a scene from either a quest card that you have and you're in the current location for. You can choose a scene number from a location if in that city. Sometimes other cards are placed out to refer to a scene that can be chosen to perform if in the right place. Or if you are in between cities or you don't want to do any of the other things, then you can always, no matter what and no matter where you're at, you can draw an event card. With that event card, you will look from the top to the bottom and you will perform the scene of the prerequisite that you meet first from the top down. When reading a scene, there are almost always multiple choices that you will need to make. Some will list a skill check and mention that if it's easy, medium, or hard, and you will roll your dice and fulfill that skill check. Sometimes the scene will ask questions like if you have a certain tag on any of your cards or if you don't. The story master who is reading the story out loud might also be asked secret questions. Those are always in a turquoise color and those shouldn't be read out loud, but they will answer them kind of secretly helping to guide the story. The Book of Adventures is the shining star in the game as it gives players chances to explore and adventure throughout the land, gaining items and making their own choices to whatever they would like to do. Sometimes it results in prestige points, which is the score in the game. Other times it might give them cards that will help them later on. But everyone will have a sense of progression some way or another. After each character performs their turn by again moving up to two spaces, performing a scene of choice, and then the round is over and the day token is moved to the next day, and the first player will again take their new turn, and then all other players will follow. The game ends depending on the mode that you're playing, competitively or cooperatively. Either way, you can save your progression by placing all of your cards together and putting them in a slot for your character. You will also then be keeping your dial and your skill markers where they're at on your player board. The game can also be reset to play again with new players following directions shown in the rulebook. There is a lot to like about this game, but only if you are looking for a game where you can do whatever you want to do. It's an open world with a ton of choices that you can take. Quests will lead you to gain or perform things, but you don't have to do those things. You can do random scenes in cities or from event cards. You can go to the casino and try to win it big. 
to me it feels like an RPG video game where you can go around, sometimes your choices will go down a long path of, of other choices or sometimes it's just short and sweet and then you move on and try to exploring other things. Many times you gain cool items, new abilities, companions, and just things. If you are looking for a strategic game where you need to form an engine and then you watch it work, this game is not it. But rather, I feel like this is for players who like the roleplay feel but don't want to invest the time or brain power to get into the actual RPG games. But rather, this game puts up some walls and then it lets you do whatever you want to do. Tons of choices, rolling dice hoping to get successes on skills that you're being tested with. And the game is that of an open world adventure storytelling game. Here are my thoughts. The stories are great, they are written well, and yes, you will be reading a lot when playing this game. The story master or the player who reads can make the game even more exciting if they can read well and give excitement or give the words little meaning when reading it. The rules are pretty easy to pick up, and the only times that I had questions on what a card actually was referring to or what it meant, I visited the back of the rule book and found the answers very quickly. The rule book is outlined well, and the components in this game are great. I like the skill markers that make it easy to save your character statuses, yet also makes it easy to reference for skill checks. There are a lot of cards, and this is only a prototype here, so the final game will have even more cards, which just means more storylines and more things to explore. Also, the dice have great colors matching the skills, and also the icons are easy to read. If you like rolling dice, then you will be doing that a lot in this game. You get two chances of rolling, and it forms a kind of a push-your-luck thing, as maybe you rolled one success on your first roll, then you think, is that good enough for what you're trying to do? Well, you're not sure yet, so do you risk it and perhaps roll them all again and roll no successes? But just maybe you will roll more and be able to do more, and maybe that's just worth it to do that. But the choice of being able to choose if you want to re-roll or not is very fun. And while playing the game, you will roll the dice both of those ways. You will re-roll them and get better results, but you will also re-roll them and get worse results. The game is fun and unpredictable that way. I have all good things to say about the art, and it matches the games that Sammy and his team have designed in the past. But me and my family really like this game for a more relaxed game of just exploring and making choices without worrying if it might be the best choice to win or not. With less pressure on who wins, we tended to laugh more, relax more, and enjoy the random events that happened. There are still choices and decisions that players need to make so they will gain items or help them succeed in a task, but it was less planning and worrying and more relaxing and fun as you really get to spend quality time with the other players instead of just thinking of what your next move is going to be. So explore Demiria however you would like with your family and friends in Lands of Gauzier by Snowdale Design. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.